Okay, so the episode of today will be about lapping the 12900K. Why so? Well, I want to try to improve the thermals of this particular CPU, mainly with the upcoming extreme overclocking attempts in mind for air or water use. So if you purchase any of these 12th generation CPUs, do not think about lapping. Try to consider deleting the CPU because that will help you more than what you can gain with lapping. And lapping is a lot more certain way to void your warranty compared to deleting. Oh well, both methods technically void the warranty, but anyways. So uh, deleting is about swapping the thermal interface material between the IHS and the CPU's die. I'm sure many of you are already uh, pretty well acquainted what deleting means. But uh, the problem for the more exotic cooling methods like dry ice, liquid nitrogen, phase change cooling is that uh, you can't use liquid metal efficiently when going below zero degrees or even like plus five or plus ten. So uh, for uh, the more exotic cooling methods, the indium solder is the best possible thermal, thermal interface material between the die and the IHS and we need that for the extreme uh, attempts. For um, purely air or water use, liquid metal has the best possible uh, thermal conductivity between the IHS and the CPU's die and that's why if you are absolutely certain that you will only use the CPU on air or water then deleting can be very worthwhile but for my use I cannot do it so the only thing I can do is to improve the quality of the IHS this one doesn't have like a very perfect one I think it's over it's not bad but it's not like uh, the best possible either. So uh, I will try to get pretty much the same finish what I got with the uh, when I was lapping the RTX 3090 uh, GPU's die. So I'll use the same Matador sandpapers. I will just attach the sandpaper onto a large piece of glass which I got from a local uh, glass store. Uh, I will show that to you very very soon. So I will uh, just uh, move the CPU back and forth against the sandpaper so that I can uh, make the uh, surface of the uh, IHS as even as possible so it's quite so the lapping in itself is a very uh, like uh, old method even with uh, CPUs and so on so uh, as this is an engineering sample CPU this doesn't have warranty anyway so uh, I can just make the surface of the CPU just pure copper but again if you have a retail CPU lapping will uh, destroy all of the markings on, of, on top of the CPU it will get rid of the nickel coating, so uh, that will definitely void your warranty. So uh, be sure that you know what you are doing if you uh, wish to attempt lapping. But again, try deleting first. It will gain you maybe uh, between 5 to 10 degrees on the 12900K with a very good custom water, custom water cooling solution. And then if you really want to take it even further, then you can consider about uh, custom IHS or lapping the IHS. But anyway, so I will just remove the CPU from uh, the uh, socket and I'll just move the camera. I'll show you the uh, lapping setup very, very briefly, but I'll do most of the work of camera because the whole process takes quite a bit. But I will start off with 400 grit. I usually like to start between 400 and 200 grit. 200 is quite rough, so that's why I generally start with 400. And once the whole uh, IHS is uh, go, uh, pure copper, then I can move up the grits to 600, 800 and 1000 plus. But that's uh, pretty much how it goes. Okay, so here's the actual setup. So I've placed this uh, large glass panel on the floor and I've taped down one uh, 400 grit Matador sandpaper and I will just use some water to make the uh, surface of the sandpaper wet and I'll just move the CPU back and forth. Now, uh, I recommend if you uh, purchase these kind of sandpapers, I really recommend you store them in a box like this so that they so that they remain in a very good shape. The issue that I've made along the years is that I've just stored them on top of some table for a very long period of time and they get like dirt and dust and they can cause scratches. So uh, definitely store your sandpapers in, a, in some very uh, good place so that you can use them and they remain in good shape. But uh, this is pretty uh, like straightforward. We'll just add some water like this. And then we will just take the CPU and move it back and forth like this. 
These are the very same sandpapers I used with the uh, when I was lapping the RDX 39 Kimpin in my uh, latest attempts. When uh, when one of the sandpapers was attached on top of the uh, large glass panel, but pretty straightforward. This will just take some time. So uh, you can see it starts to lose some of the uh, nickel plating. So we can see that the uh, IHS, this particular IHS, is a little bit like higher or taller at the edges. So the uh, center is lower and the edges, and that's not very good, especially with a large container that's definitely flat. So I'll just keep doing this and I'll show you the uh, end result once this is all done. And okay, I think that's pretty much it for the first phase of this whole process. So the whole IHS has pretty much been uh, revealed now to pure copper. So the nickel plating is gone. So now we can move on to finer grit. So as we used 400, I'll uh, move on to uh, maybe do one 600 and then 800 and then 1000 plus. But uh, you have to keep swapping the uh, sandpaper quite often. As with the RTX 3090, the sandpaper really gets uh, quite bad quite quickly. That's uh, two as I cut them in half, so this is like two and a half. So two and a half 400 grit sandpapers to reveal the items to pure copper. So definitely no need to use a more like rougher grit like P200. The thing about these sandpapers is that these are uh, silicon carbide sandpapers. So generally the like the 3M sandpapers that I that are very easy to get over here, they are aluminium oxide sandpapers. When it comes to uh, like die lapping, so lapping the RTX 3090 for example, or any other like GPU, a silicon carbide sandpaper has been giving a lot better results. So this is actually the first time when I'm lapping a copper IHS with silicon carbide sandpaper. And when looking at this like finish, it definitely looks a little bit different than with aluminum oxide sandpaper. So let's look at the final result after. But now I'll just move on to 600 and let's keep going. When it comes to uh, the uh, surface, the key is to use as flat surface as possible. When I was looking at lapping videos by Gamers Nexus and similar, they uh, attached sandpaper to, la to uh, like a mouse pad or similar. So that's definitely a flat enough surface. So definitely get a proper like surface against which you uh, do the whole lapping. So. Uh, well, the most flat object as possible is a piece of glass like this, or a mirror. But this definitely works just fine and it's very easy to get from a local glass store. So I'll keep going and I'll show you the uh, how it looks like after the, after the whole process is done. Okay, and that's pretty much the end result. So after 400 crit I did 600, then 800 and finally I stopped at 1200 crit. I have even finer sandpapers, but I think 1200 is just enough. Some people only do up until like 800. I have even like 2000, 4000, 6000 and even 8000 grid sandpapers and with those you can get pretty much a mirror finish. But uh, it's not really needed. As long as it's flat, it's pretty much just enough. So even with the RDX 3090, we were only doing like uh, between 1200 and 2000. So I think this will be just fine enough. So now I will uh, mount this board onto the test bench. Let's quickly try the CPU, make sure it works and uh, let's see if we uh, got any real gains. So uh, last time when I was testing the CPU I was uh, at around like 5.5 gigahertz. It was fine at 5.5 in R20 and so on if none of the uh, core temperatures went over 77 or 78 degrees Celsius. So uh, by running it now we can see like do we have a clear visible gain or is it pretty much the same and then maybe at the end I can also do a test mount with the LN2 container but uh, I'm sure like if you are watching this video then uh, you are probably like looking what are the actual gains with a water block so we'll see my water block doesn't have the best possible surface as it has been used so, so much but uh, it still has pretty good performance. But uh, yeah, let's see. I think it looks great. The um, overall like surface looks much better than what I usually had with the 3M sandpaper. So definitely, I think these Matador sandpapers are very, very good. And it was actually quite fast process overall. But yeah, so uh, now uh, I'll switch onto the capture card and let's see how this actually runs.
Okay, so I booted up the same profile which I used last time, or well, almost the same profile. So 5.5 uh, gigahertz across all of the eight P cores and 4.3 on the E uh, on the E cores, and V core is at 1.33 volts with the same low line calibration setting. Memory is at 7,000 CAS31 and command rate one. 4.5 on the cache. Same BIOS version pretty much, and these are the Corsair Vengeance sticks. So let's uh, open up CDBench R20 and let's look at the temperatures. But I don't really expect any serious gain from this whole procedure because I do have quite a lot of experience now from lapping overall. So both CPUs and GPUs and with the latest generations of CPUs, I haven't really uh, gained anything uh, from lapping on air or water. So like X299 CPUs like 10980XC, which I lapped on my channel and also the 9900K with those CPUs, I didn't really gain anything from lapping on air or water. So uh, it pretty much tells us that lapping is pretty much just for the very last few megahertz on LN2. So you might be able to gain like 20 megahertz or 25 megahertz or 30 megahertz from lapping, but that's pretty much it. And it's very hard to say that is it even worth it. So let's uh, look at these numbers. So 71, 61, 75, 75, 70, 74, 74, maybe a two degree gain. We can look at the uh, screenshots like side by side, but uh, can't really see any like serious, like visible gain from this whole thing. So uh, let's close up CPU Z. The minimum temperatures are a little bit warmer than uh, on this previous screenshot so let's uh, put these side by side so uh, a little bit warmer minimum temperatures on this core temp window over here 73 73 60 76 versus 77 75 77 74 76 so uh, we have maybe gained one degree or one or two degrees that's pretty much it so uh, definitely not worth it based on uh, those numbers but uh, it might still give something when we run the CPU on LN2. But it was definitely interesting to test it out. So uh, now I'll just uh, remove the water block, look at the uh, thermal paste spread, and then let's do a dry mount with the Kimping Cooling T-Rex container together. And let's look at the thermal paste spread and then just wrap this whole video up. Okay, that's the uh, thermal paste spread after removing the CPU water block. So uh, we can see that there has been quite a lot of pressure directly at the center of the CPU and then quite a bit of excess thermal paste at the edges of the IHS. Now we do know that many uh, cooler manufacturers, they do actually make the uh, coolers a little bit concave because many CPU heat spreaders, just like this one over here on this particular uh, CPU, the IHS was actually a little bit convex. So the uh, edges of the IHS, they were a little bit taller than the center of the IHS. So that's why they make the uh, base of the cooler a little bit concave. So that also explains why you can't really uh, gain much from lapping the CPU. So if you wanted to gain properly from this whole procedure, you would have to lap both the CPU itself as well as the cooler, so the CPU water block in my case. So if I lapped the water block, then I think I would gain like two to three extra degrees. So maybe the whole process could gain me five degrees, but that's pretty much it. So still less what you could gain if you deleted the CPU. And now here in front of the camera is the thermal paste spread after doing a dry mount with the T-Rex container from Kimping Cooling. And what we can see from the get-go is that this side over here has had a little bit less pressure than the rest of the IHS. But overall, that actually looks quite good, if you ask me. Thermal paste spread never looks so perfect after a dry mount on air compared to like uh, after, if you really run the CPU on LN2 for a few hours. I have a good comparison from my old images. So here's the 10980XC, which I actually lapped on uh, my channel. I did multiple like uh, test mounts on air, like dry mounts, just like this time. And in the images, the thermal paste spread doesn't look that uh, 
like uh, spectacular uh, uh, either. But after running the CPU on LN2 for a few hours, the thermal paste spread looks absolutely awesome. So uh, that's pretty much the whole like uh, long and short answer. So you can gain something from the whole process for LN2, but it's definitely not worth it uh, for air and water use. And it's the same thing for graphics cards. No difference whatsoever on air or water, but on LN2 like RDX 3090, you can make the GPU to be able to go from minus 150 to full pot temperatures and it can gain you a lot in the actual clock speeds. So uh, I'll be testing the CPU on LN2 in a few days. So it uh, will be interesting to see how it looks like after a few hours on LN2, but I think it should be very, very good. But after that, I know the final answer to this uh, of this whole uh, procedure. So uh, stay tuned for those actual tests so that we can actually uh, look at the IHS later on. But uh, pretty good, I guess. So uh, hopefully this video answered to some of your questions, like if you have been thinking about lapping overall or just on these uh, 12 gen CPUs, as many of these latest generations from Intel and AMD, they are soldered. So many people don't want to do uh, de-lidding. So the only thing you could do is lapping, as uh, you cannot use a custom IHS if you don't delete the CPU. What I already said, I wouldn't lap the CPU if you were just doing like air or water cooling. So uh, if you want to actually gain something, then consider deleting the CPU. So uh, that can actually gain you something. So uh, I think I could gain a few degrees more if I lapped the water block as well. Even so, that would be maybe like four or five degrees total. Even then, I don't think the uh, end result would be uh, good enough to do it or to recommend it to anyone. So uh, that's what I feel. But yeah, so stay tuned for the LN2 tests and give me a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I'll see you on the next one.